Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today I'll be showing you how to paint realistic miniature botanicals on illustration board with watercolor pencils. This video covers painting technique for four miniature illustrations, and they are a part of a larger original painting that I did. Patrons can get a more in-depth look through my Patreon post deconstructing this project via temperature, layout, balance, color scheme, color wheels, and more. Just part of the art blogs, Q&As, notes, sketches, deconstructed painting posts, and art gift rewards available for my patrons on Patreon. So each of these little circles of crescent illustration board, or rinchies, which I think is a horribly dumb name, is only one inch in diameter. So pretty small. I pulled out my Albert Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils because they are so soft and creamy and top-notch in quality, and yet I rarely use them. But these teeny circular spaces felt perfect for watercolor pencils, and it made the project more fun to switch tools a bit. So I used the watercolor pencils three different ways, and I'm going to show all three in this video. The first way I'm doing right now on this pollen-covered stamen. I color with the pencils dry, like conventional color pencils, onto the illustration board, and then I come in with a damp, clean brush and just wet the colors to make them blend. I made sure to use very little water, as the circle is only one inch across in diameter and the stamen space is much teenier than even that like an eighth of an inch at the widest area, so too much water will just create a big diluting bleed. And I do this initial dry coloring in with a yellow, an orange, and a bit of the blue pencils. Then the second way I used the pencils was by dipping the pencil tips into water and stippling with the wet pencil tips into the stamen area. This wet pointillism technique is great for this because the pollen is granular, so it creates the proper texture. And even more than a spotter brush, a watercolor pencil gives really nice even dots for dry or wet pointillism because, well, it actually comes to a point. So in a past video, which was a live stream with a winged bunny, I discovered that watercolor pencils could do really awesome pointillism. And you get smaller dots the way I did it here for the stamen by dipping the pencil tip in the water. You can also get larger dots by wetting the paper in a larger area first and then stippling in with the dry watercolor pencils. And then the paint will bleed into larger dots because the paper is going to be wet. Obviously not a good idea here because the stamen and pollen dots are in such a minuscule space. I did the larger bleedy dots in pointillism for the winged bunny demo for the decorative foliage around the bunny. So if you want to see those, you can check that out. And to finish off with the red violet shadows on the stamen, I just dissolved the watercolor pencil into a palette and just used it like paint. This is the third way I use the watercolor pencils and it's also the most common way I use watercolor pencils, which is why I only own a small set and hardly use them, since I just end up using them like conventional paint with a paintbrush. I moved on to doing a single peel violet petal near to the top of the piece. The pansy below it on screen is actually not fully done. It's a bit off balance in the values and I just thought I'd point it out because I don't want you to think that it's all buttoned up when it's still in progress and is going to be finished later. So the little violet petal is done wet into wet and the watercolor pencil is applied only as paint from the palette with a brush. Again, that's how I mostly use these pencils since I'm a creature of habit and most comfortable with a brush because it's so versatile. Brushes can do fine or thick lines or anything in between, or deposit thin or dense paint, or anything in between. And yeah, brushes are definitely harder to control than pencils or markers and such, but they are a great versatile tool to master if you take the time to practice. So I just use a brush to do the gradual buildup of vein lines and value in this petal with wet and paint application.
it results in a realistic and delicate petal. This exact same technique can be used to paint insect wings or fairy wings and even some types of fabric. Just imagine the petal in a different color with some bright white highlights and it'll look just like an insect wing. The following light pink petal is done the same way, using the watercolor pencils as dissolved paint with a paintbrush. I did apply the veins wet on dry for the pink petal instead, and then softened them with a later layer of pink over the top of the whole petal surface. This results in non-bleedy vein lines versus the other vein lines for the violet petal that were put into wet paper and bled slightly. The last miniature painting I filmed was a fun drop of flower nectar, again using the watercolor pencils as paint with a brush from a palette. Using them dry on the paper or using them for wet pointillism is really fun, but it creates certain textures and I'm not using those textures for these petals or dewdrops and lots of other things in this piece. I go over how I paint dewdrops step by step in a past video with a spring nymph and also in a Patreon blog post on dewdrops. But here's another fat glossy drop in case you can't get enough of them. I know I can't. But if you want a step-by-step -step explanation on dew drops, then go check out that other stuff that I mentioned. I only used four watercolor pencils for this piece, as well as a white just for glossy highlights on drops. The four colors were cadmium orange, thalo blue, magenta, and cadmium yellow. This creates a tetrad of dual complements orange and blue, and yellow and red violet. And that's a near complement, but I used mostly violet mixes by mixing the blue into the magenta color pencils so I could utilize complementary mixes on my piece. So the yellow greens and blue greens for the drop and the violet drop shadow are all mixed from the four pencil colors I mentioned. And I've said this time and again, that if I'd pulled out a new color, in this case a new pencil to paint in the greens, the new color might clash with the other four colors, which were planned as a harmonious tetrad, and that would make the whole piece less professional. To avoid color chaos and too many colors that create visual discord, I'm going to stick to a limited color scheme like I do for all my paintings, and in this case it's the four pencils in orange, blue, yellow, and violet. And the white I use for the final highlights doesn't count as an additional color as it's just echoing the white of the paper. However, I didn't mix any pastel colors using white pencil with the pencils that have spectral colors. I limited the white to highlights, this keeps my watercolor colors luminous and transparent. I only mix white into my spectral colors if I'm doing a gouache painting. Otherwise, it's no white at all or just white for certain highlights to keep my colors in their most vibrant and transparent watercolor state. The surface of the Crescent Illustration Board has an eggshell finish, very similar to smooth hot pressed watercolor paper. At this really small size, it handles the dry and wet watercolor pencil and also wet paint glazes very well. So it's a much better painting surface than cardstock or watercolor ground as a primer, or even cheaper thin cellulose watercolor paper. That said, it's still not as robust as externally and internally sized cotton watercolor paper like Arches, but it was a pleasant surface for the little botanical illustrations. I was able to get them layered and realistic with no issues. There were 19 miniature paintings total for this piece, 
and I hope you enjoyed seeing how I did four of them. I didn't film the rest of them. I film a lot of art, and sometimes, especially for more ambitious and original artwork, I just want to take my time and get that camera away from over my shoulder. Then I can change positions more and relax and just take my time and even come back and refine pieces after a second look with fresh eyes. I think the various ways that the camera holds me back for original artwork and also all the editing and voiceover time for videos is really going to inform my art and video goals in future years. I'll see how I feel about it in 2019 and keep you posted. My finished piece is called Be Friend and it has 19 little paintings and a honeycomb hexagon shape. The invaluable honeybee is central, surrounded by important things that she creates or uses. This is an original piece I planned to do last year and I'm glad I finally got to it. I hope you enjoyed what I shared. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all teeny painting adventures.